I feel like uh, we're unstoppable. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody's trying to stop us either, which oh. is a de facto means of being unstoppable. For example, I like to, I like to very aggressively demand that people do things that they're already doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, fucking keep walking. Yeah, or, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, you yeah, eat that yeah. soup or whatever they're yeah. doing just because it makes me feel empowered. And also, it, that makes I think sense. In, in some way it makes them feel okay that they're following the rules. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, it's, it's like uh, positive reinforcement, kind of, I think. Yeah, but Maybe how not. does that have anything to do Nothing. with us being no. unstoppable? No, I'm just saying if you... You don't feel like anybody's Technically, I am unstoppable if I do that because yeah. no one's going to even attempt to stop me, which yeah. means you're unstoppable because nobody's trying to stop you. I don't feel like anybody could stop you. No, not doing that. Not yeah. trolling for no. sure. You're I can't stop. So what's been so man, we are we are literally one day away from it's like the final countdown. Yeah, by the time you guys hear this, there will be a uh civil well, war. Maybe. <laughs> there may be a president, uh maybe not. The uh attorney general in, in Pennsylvania said they're gonna they, they have a three day window after election day in which to count continue counting votes or receiving new votes or some shit like that yeah and the guy's pretty uh pretty adamant that they're going to keep counting regardless of what results happen elsewhere i mean we'll see if there's other uh swing states that flip trump's way like minnesota michigan uh, uh ohio wisconsin etc uh then it may not matter right we'll see but it seems like he's intent on dragging things out um We'll see, I suppose. I mean, the Supreme Courts in a lot of states have upheld um, challenges to the late voting stuff in, some, in, in a lot of places, but uh, Pennsylvania, did, they did not. Two levels of courts said they were going to allow state. whatever the fuck. It's I mean, and the state. states get to decide. I mean, Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution lets the states decide it's who. It's one state, man. Like, it ain't yeah. going to come down. I promise you it's not going to be close enough for one state. Like, that, that just shows you the level of, of narcissism mm -hmm. That, that are, some of our leaders have in these states is, is a guy, you know, wanting to do that or, or a state wanting to do that. Yeah. And honestly, like that, that, that state won't be the decider. It won't no, be, it I won't don't come think down so to either. one state. I don't think so either. I mean, he's, that's a pretty big risk too he's taking because if Trump like houses uh, Biden there, not that that's likely necessarily based on the polling, but we'll see, right? That polling is kind of, yeah. kind of all over the place. But if, if Trump were to just destroy Biden in that state, then that would be a problem for him. If it, if it was close, then he can play that out for a while and gain some national notoriety yeah, for himself, maybe. maybe plan a run. I just don't know, that's a I don't know that that's the, the hill I want to die on. No, I mean, it's a, it's a risk because, like I said, if Biden gets blown out there, then there's no battle for him to fight. So he's always going to be remembered as the guy who tried to start a fight unnecessarily. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Trump doesn't forget those. No, he certainly doesn't. <laughs> he'll, he'll definitely have something to say about that guy, um, which is funny. So, so you're going to vote, Dan? You know, we talked about this. We already voted. You you already voted, didn't you? I'm voting tomorrow. Okay. I'm I, going tomorrow. I'm going on election voted. day. You already voted? You just, yeah. You, wanna, you, you did go and vote. Yeah. You just want to see the, uh, like, do you just want to see it I election see day? It. it will be interesting. You told me, you told me mm -hmm. you weren't going to vote. What I, changed your mind? Well, I considered not voting uh, because both of these people are shitbags, in my opinion. Yep. Um, but it doesn't set a very good example Right. When people listen to what you say and do, if you decide not to engage directly. Right? Absolutely. So I did vote. Not that I, you know, cared one way or the other. I, I it's not that I don't care. It's just that we'll be fine either way. Yeah. Right? Neither one of them are going to change. I, yeah. Like it's just which one's going to hurt us the least amount. Kind yeah. Of. And it's I, I like the idea of uh, having Trump in for a number of reasons. One, he doesn't have a uh, socialist crawling up his back trying to wedge herself into the White House. Yeah. Uh, uh, the other thing is that he's been pretty good for the economy. And then the other thing is kind of, I don't know what you would call it. It's not for the entertainment's sake, but I like the fact that he's a bit of a lightning rod because it exposes a lot of the old school uh, bullshit that DC believes, right? Mm -hmm. that, that one of the reasons the establishment parties hate him so much is that he does all the shit that they've been doing this whole time, but he doesn't, waste the time being courteous about it yeah yeah he he's not trying to it. he's not trying to like to he, hide he, it he's not trying yeah. to hide it yeah he's like look it is what it is mm -hmm. and then when people call him out he calls them out on their yeah. shit. and i think that that segues nicely into what the theme of today's show is so yeah. it's about personal responsibility and the role it plays in pretty much everything so 
this guy, this AG in Pennsylvania is making a fucking play mm -hmm. and it'll work or it won't. Right. Uh, and the problem with one of the problems with the Democratic Party, but I think the systemic problem is that they weren't able to intellectually and emotionally admit defeat when Trump won. Never. They weren't able to look at themselves and be like, there's a reason this happened. Mm -mm. And instead of accepting that and maybe changing their strategy or views or whatever, they blame Russia, they blame this, they blame that, try to impeach him and blah, 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 right? They blame the, yeah. That's, we all know that person. They even that, blame the same very system that they get elected Oh, on. yeah. Well, they, the system that they created, yeah. They so created. it's, it's um, people that lose and then immediately start blaming everybody else. I mean, we've all had teammates like that in sports or in a, in a job, in the military. That person is just fucking terrible. Yeah. People that don't take personal responsibility, we're going to venture off into a few different topics on this. Uh, but the background for each of them is to challenge yourself first. Make sure that you have, that your aim is true before you start telling everybody else what to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you don't necessarily have to have all the answers for that to be the case, but you do need to be thinking correctly. You need to be processing information in like a scientific method and, uh, and also academic rigor, making sure that the notes that you're using and receiving the things that you're reading are actually true before you fold them into your hypothesis. But don't, but don't you think like part of the problem is, is that, you know, so many people don't stand for anything. They just stand for whatever they come in contact with. Right. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like their principles of life are kind of like the new fad and it's right. like, or whatever the hot topic is. And isn't that hard to gauge and look in the mirror and hold yourself accountable to what you and educate yourself and build better principles. If you don't stand for anything, if you don't even know what your core principles are right. and they're, they're always changing with whatever political climate is, it, it sounds kind of really something that's really near and dear to us, but yep. it sounds like us trying to fight a war in Iraq and Afghanistan, right? Yeah. Like the, the, the mission and the principles of what we were fighting it on changed every time the seats in the white house change right. or every time the political climate comes up with something, some new idea. Right. And, and I, it's I a feel good like idea fair, yeah. it's a good idea fairy. And I feel like that's the same thing that's going on with, with us as Americans right now, or with a lot of Americans mm. is that, that they really don't, they don't stand for anything, so they're they're really not their personal. But with that, they don't have any personal responsibility, right? If they don't have, well, I mean, what's to stand what do you on. what do you judge it against? Like, how do you decide if you did well today if you don't have well, a standard? Well, I mean, and I, like I, a standard has got to be there, right? Well, there there has to be some level of, like like it, it's kind of like driving on a road. Like mm. there has to be some line that tells you if you're in the middle or you're on your side, right? right. Like like you have to have some type of gauge to see what direction you're going. And if you're to even, to even count of, to even be able to bounce off, what does success look like? Mm. You, you know what I mean? Like if you don't have a starting point and right. you don't have a foundation and something you can see or, or say or, or feel or, 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 or go off of, then how do you, but the problem with doing that is, is once you declare something you believe in, mm. you automatically have to start fighting for that and you automatically have to start educating yourself on that to be able right. to protect and defend that, right? It's kind of like, yeah, yeah. it's kind of like throwing your flag somewhere. Wherever right. you're gonna post your flag up, automatically you're gonna start being attacked and someone's gonna want that, that, right. that, that they're gonna attack what you believe or yeah, what yeah. you think. And that's, so, this is the problem with the, the American discourse mm -hmm. that there's no option for your flag to be planted near whatever you find is true. Well, well, right? No, because, well, but I think what's worse than that is, I think there's what, what's worse than that is, is that people won't plant their flag at all. Yeah. People won't plant well, their I think flag that's, at all. I think that's why they won't now. Right. Well, I think people, I think there's, okay, there's some, there, it's a combination probably of moral relativism and then just, just disassociative disorder when it comes to American politics. People don't want to necessarily align themselves with this or that. So now they're just kind of, and there's that old saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. I think yeah. that's, I mean, that's cute. Sounds nice. It's kind of true, I guess. I don't think you'll fall for anything, but if you don't stand for something, you're definitely not going to be productive as a member of society. Well, you're, I mean, but, you know but, I mean? But, but my point is, is like, if you don't stand for something, mm. then, then, then what are you really doing? Right. Right. Like, like, and you're what, perfectly, what, it's if you want to live your life, just live in your life and experience and shit and not having purpose, that's go for it, man. I mean, it's, you only get the one life. Do what the fuck you want, to be honest, as long as you're not hurting everybody else. But you're going to find it if that's the way you live your life. I personally believe you will find that very challenging. But how do you know what? How do you know? I mean, I think it's hard. Yeah. I, how do you know what points are worth it? 
are worth your time. Right. Well, there's a book by Sam Harris, and we'll probably have him on this show at some point. He's a really smart guy. He's uh, kind of a philosopher slash neuroscientist, right? Yeah. So he dabbles in a lot of stuff, writes a lot of books. Wrote a book called The Moral Landscape, and basically it discusses a scientific approach to identifying what exactly moral and ethical behavior is. Um, and the summary is essentially that the best thing that could happen is to prom somehow promote conscious joy, right? Because mm -hmm. we know that the only thing that we really have in common is that we're all conscious. Yeah. And consciousness is the only way that we understand who, that we're actual people. We understand the universe. We understand uh, we feel pain, both emotional and physical and stuff like that. So the one thing in common we have is that. So the best thing you could do is to make that happy, make the conscious consciousness happy, right? Now, I'm not talking about a collective consciousness necessarily, but the individual. Yeah. And the worst thing you could do then, if that's the case, is to promote or allow conscious uh, suffering. Mm -hmm. So you wanna, you wanna, in my opinion, I think the, the, very, the very core, like the very top level, uh, like greatest common denominator thing that every human being can do is to promote conscious joy and mitigate in whatever way they're able conscious suffering. That's what I think. And I, there's so many extrapolations from that because it, it presumes a number of things that we take care of all of our people, right? Yeah. That, but that we, we seek, but and it, it also implies that we have to know the truth because without the truth, you can't diagnose and fix things properly. So there's a lot of things that go second, third or, or order effect out of that. But I think that's a good starting point for anybody's life, regardless well, I mean, I, of what your yeah. ethnicity, religion, race, gender, fucking political beliefs. I don't give a shit about any of that. That is a pretty easy rule for everybody to follow. Well, I think, I think like, I think the, the only way that we lose freedom mm -hmm. is when you don't stand for anything, right? When you won't plant your flag, you're going to lose freedom eventually. Like if the whole country quit planting their flag right. on their beliefs. And I mean, look, it, it, it's good for people to disagree. It's good mm -hmm. for people to take a stance. I mean, look, like as much as, yeah, like, look, r the rioting is terrible and it's obviously not, there's nothing back on it, but protesting, there's nothing wrong with it. No. You know what I mean? Like people, people who are taking time out of their day for something they believe in, whether they're right or wrong, um, is still an opportunity that people are taking a stance on something. <clears throat> yeah, it's right? good. I, I, my buddy, Jeff Taylor from the, uh, from the 82nd Airborne used to say, uh, I like your motivations. I like your motivation, but your tactics are confusing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I would agree uh, about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's certainly a minority of people that are involved in any of the, uh, the looting and, and, and rioting bullshit. But, you know, that's a, that's, a good, that's a good thing that it's a minority. What's not a good thing is that major, like, political donors and Hollywood people are funding these people getting out of prison or getting out of jail that, afterwards. That's a problem. Like that's if, the problem. If, if I understand... It's like funding terrorists. Essentially, yeah. I understand the idea of wanting to make sure that actual, like normal protesters don't get disabused their right to protest, right? Because that's in the Constitution. I got it. And if you want to spend your money trying to make that go away, I think that's a good thing to do. But a guy that was a rapist got out, and various other people that had criminal records got out because of that fund yep. and committed crimes after the fact. That's on you when, when that happens. And it's again, comes back to personal responsibility. If you have power and influence, and every single person does, even if it's over only your own vote, yep. or only the way you act every day, or if it's over your family, or over your workplace, or over, in our case, people that watch this shit, you have a goddamn responsibility to give those people accurate information without bullshit. And when it goes wrong, when you put out bad information, then that's on you. And you have, there's a price to pay for that shit, both in credibility and in uh, your your... I guess social score, for lack of a better phrase. I'm not a fan of the crazy shit that China wants to do with all that, but I do like the idea of keeping track of who the assholes are. You know I, what I mean? I mean, yeah. I mean, and and I, and I think. And like, I don't mean like the government doing it. Obviously, I don't mean that. The government sucks. I think you have a, a, a responsibility of, of if you're gonna if you're gonna cause unrest, mm. if you're gonna cause a problem, um, are you willing to give everything you got for that problem? Right. Like if it's not that big of an issue, then you're really just a bunch of static. Right. You can't right. come out and bitch about every single thing that pisses you yeah. off 
You can't come out and protest off of every single thing that you don't like. You know what I mean? Because yeah, this, then everybody would just be protesting all the time. Yeah. And then it's just a bunch of static and nobody's, mm. nobody even knows what the cause or what people are protesting for anymore, right? Yeah, it's the same thing that happened with Occupy Wall Street. There was no, like they did some big shit. They, they led a boycott of Bank of America and got like $65 billion shifted from their banks into like credit unions across the country and shit like that. That was a big deal. Yeah. They had the power to do something and they didn't use any of it because they didn't know how. And uh, it, I don't think there are a lot of nefarious characters in there. Like there always are, right? If there's some loosely governed organization yep. like that, the power hungry will try to rise to power. And usually people that want power don't deserve it. And, yep. and 100, I would say 100% of cases. I, I've never met someone, even people that I like, that gained some kind of political power that didn't like start having problems immediately after. Yep. Um, so it seems like everyone's kind of uh, pissed off right now for a lot of reasons. About something. Like whether it's COVID or how that's being handled, the reporting in the American media right now and the disinformation bullshit that's, that's happening, uh, uh, social media choking out certain points of view, um, racial justice, the election, whatever it is. Uh, we talk about holding people accountable a lot, but I wonder how much time we think about holding ourselves accountable, what that means. And, and how do we hold ourselves accountable in today's climate where openly admitting mistakes compromises your integrity, at least the yeah. optics are that, right? Like somehow it's, it's admitting you were wrong and then adopting the correct position is somehow seems like a like like something you have to pay a penalty for. No, you should be appreciated for making that step because it's not easy to do that. It's well, not I mean, easy I to change your mind in the first place. It's certainly not easy to announce it publicly when you know you risk embarrassment for doing it. But we have to make that normal. I mean, I think you got to. I mean, I guess it really just depends on who you take, who you're taking the opinions from, right? I mean, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're going to sit here and judge your, your. I mean, if you can't admit you're wrong, then you're probably trying to base. Um, your credibility and you're, you're listening to the wrong people, right? right. I mean, I, 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 I try to live by a rule that if I wouldn't take advice from someone, I'm damn sure not going to take their criticism. Right, yeah. Like I mean, I'm, not good, gonna, I'm not going to listen to, you know, I'm not going to listen to what they got to say. I mean, look, somebody's always, somebody's always going to, um, to, 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 I call it dance song in the grave. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of haters. Yeah. There's a lot. I mean, look, we know, listen, we know a lot. There's a lot of, we know a lot of people on social media yeah. who all they do all day long is they go find an article mm. and then they scream about it and dance on the grave of something with yeah. just li literally selective facts. Yeah. So I, I think you just got like, it, it just really depends on a, what are you trying to do? Right. So, and I think this goes back to though, it goes back to what I said in the beginning. This is why you need to select what you're going to take a stance on. Right. If you're going to take a stance on it, well, you got to be willing to, it's, if it's important enough for you to take a stance on it, it should be important enough for you to uh, be wanting to make change yep. and for you to want to get better and not for yourself, not selfishly. The only time it's really hard to admit that you were wrong is if it exposes a selfish, a selfish intent behind right. it. Right. Well, I think, I, I don't think it's, wrong right necessarily but it certainly provides the opponent if we think of it in that way uh an easy opportunity to say just say see told you mm -hmm. i knew this guy was wrong and then they like if you admit that you made a mistake or that you believed an error or that you didn't have the full picture or that you just took time to figure it out for yourself or whatever the fucking case is um someone's going to try to apply that to every other thing that you've ever said and try to discredit you. But in reality, the, the open process of having a belief or opinion and getting new information and then changing your belief or opinion based on the facts, that is something that should not make you seem like a flip flopper or intellectually dishonest. As a matter of fact, it should show the level at which you apply academic rigor and how flexible your brain is when the new information comes in. That is, those are both good traits. And the idea that we've somehow demonized these by allowing the discourse to be flooded with assholes who just say, see, and every, pretty much every one of these conservative uh, uh, meme fucking pages 
on the internet do that shit every single day yeah. like oh see see and i'm well, sure the fucking liberal people are doing it too but because they're I, all like the same but I, but, I, but i think there's two different things here right like so i think i think you're I think you're 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 kind of talking about two different things. So you, there's a difference between uh, uh, being wrong on your principles mm -hmm. versus your ideas. Right. Like the principles you form about what you believe in, of what's right and wrong, mm -hmm. those are core foundational pieces right, yeah. that that you don't have to compromise on because that's something like like that's something that's applied to every situation, kind of mm -hmm. like the Constitution. Yeah. Yeah right the constitution should never vary but now how it's applied to the world the world's always evolving like we're always right. getting new information on different things and so that's kind of like the ideas it's okay for your ideas to not your ideas are only based off of the information that you have it's kind of like in science class your hypothesis mm -hmm. your hypothesis can change once you start getting more facts in and things like that right and that's i mean it should always it, it should I don't believe that anyone is ever a hundred percent right for every situation. No, you can't be. It's kind of like rules of engagement in Afghanistan right. or Iraq. They're not going to be, they might be right for 50% of the situations. Mm -hmm. They might be something you could reference off of, but it's not right. going like, that's why you'll never in war or in any of these things, you'll never be able to take out the humanization piece of it Yeah. to, to be able to make the decision-making piece. Well, that's why I say, that's why I reference Harris's book because if you read any manual like that, whether it's, uh, let, let's just say the blue book from yeah. back of the day, the infantry manual, or uh, like the battle drills that the army yeah. has, shit like that, they, they teach it at the lowest possible level. Like yeah. here are the basic fundamental skills you need to do this job. And then once you get to your unit or go to advanced schools, then you learn stuff that builds off of that foundation. So the foundation for me is what I said. Mm -hmm mitigate conscious suffering, promote conscious joy. And what does that mean for me as an American citizen then? It means we know that we can affect change uh, in, the, in the biggest way as close to us as possible, right? Regardless of how much money you have or any of that stuff, um, or, or an audience like this, even a, just a person that's working a nine to five job at their house will have the most effect in their own household or amongst their friend group or whomever it is, right? And their family, whatever it is. So. That, that's, that's what I look back to. What are the implications of saying that I want to promote conscious joy? That means, that means changing the way I think to, instead of thinking about myself and what makes me happy all the time, I learn to, to uh, derive my sense of worth and joy from helping other people, right? Yeah. It's a good, it, it's a rule that cascades down again to all this other stuff, I think it's the most important rule. So you could, we could write a list of other things that are important. Like one, yeah, take care of other people. That, that is an implied task from that statement for sure. Another implied task is to take care of whatever yours is as best you can. And, and this country is ours. We should take care of it as best we can. And, uh, you know, and then you know, spread that to the world. What we know is that individual liberty is the most important thing in the world, right? At least with regard to society and government. Every time you see individual liberty attacked in whatever way, whether it be uh, uh, trying to control markets, whether it be military force, whether it be uh, you know, fascism or communism, whatever the case is, we always see a bre immediate breakdown in society, resistance groups fail. So here's what we know. Like, guerrilla warfare is essentially white blood cells attacking a situation that should not exist. Absolutely. And it's what the American Revolution was. It's, uh, it's what was happening in Korea and Vietnam when we got involved in those two places. I'm not saying that we necessarily should have, but that is what was happening. And that conflict is innate. It's natural to us. That, that should tell us something. It's like having canines and incisors in our mouths. We know that we're supposed to eat meat because, you know, we've evolved in such a way that we have the tools for eating meat. Like we're not plant eaters. We're not yeah. supposed to be. No. So we know that. So if we're reacting in mass in every case in human history to oppressive regimes, by trying to attack that oppressive regime, then that should tell you that at its core, humanity is about individual liberty. That is the most important thing. And everything else breeds out of that. Now, we know that that's true. We also know that the most important thing that we can do with our lives is to accomplish those two goals, to mitigate suffering and promote joy, right? So that implies that you should, in whatever way you can, yeah. right? Get out there, promote liberty, enjoy, and try to mitigate suffering. It seems... It seems like 
broad, but it's really not that broad. There's a couple of things you can do every day that can help other people, whether it's your attitude or whatever the fuck. Giving yeah. some money if you've got money, or helping somebody Open it, with holding, some, holding the door for somebody. Yeah, any there's so smiling. many things. Like, yeah. I, look, I, I I break it down. I, I mean, obviously I'm a marine, so I got to keep it really really simple. Um, but for me, I, I really I I literally look at everybody this way. I think there's only one race, that I don't mm. in, in the world, and that's the human race, right? Right. I think that there's only two types of people. There's good and evil, and the only yep. thing that separates them is the intent that they have behind it, right? right. Conscious intent. Like, and is it, is it, and, and then I think you, after you decide if they are, if it's a malicious, like, are they, are they doing something maliciously or are they mm. doing something because of, they don't know any better. There's a right. huge difference. Right. Um, and then I think that, that it comes down to, is this, are they selfish or are they selfless? And then mm. you have to evaluate those two as far as why are they selfish? Are they selfish right. because they don't have food on the table? Right. Like, right. like just because, the, you know, just because a dude breaks in and he's trying to you know, he's trying to steal food or he's trying to steal money to pay his bills for right. his kids. Like that's a different problem than it is mm. a man who's breaking in to, to, to be evil and to hurt people. Right. right? I mean, it's, you know, that's, that's a really good example because we say this on the show a lot, or I do that the number one predictor of crime in all of human history that we've recorded six, six or so thousand years, six to 8,000 years of it is poverty. I mean, we know that people would rather, commit social faux pas then yep. let their children starve i mean look i'll basically. tell you i'll tell you this right now like if i could not feed my kids yeah. I, I would turn to crime before i would turn to a food house uh probably yeah i 100 percent. whether it's because like it's ego like it's, it's selling drugs yeah. or, or just stealing shit or whatever yeah, I, would I would do whatever it took yeah to take care of my kids and raise my kids of whatever i had to do right so i mean i but but does that mean that i'm a, a terrible person you know what I mean? Like there, there's yeah. a lot of big different, like we have to, as humans, you know, we, we can't just judge someone based off of how we see it. You right. Know, we I have mean, to try to put ourselves in other people's shoes yeah, of course. and say, how can we help the, what, what is the core problem of the reason this person's acting like this? Right. Like just because you see someone on the, on the subway going to work this morning, acting like an asshole, mm. doesn't mean they're an asshole. They could have just got a call that they lost their job or yeah. that their dad died or that their wife left them. You don't know what that person right. has gone through that morning. And, and if we'll stop, if we'll stop just a little bit, and not be an asshole back and just say, look, I'm going to, I'm going to be a good person, not based on how you're going to treat me, right. but based off of, because I want to be a good person and that th- the world would get a lot better. I think so too. Yeah. This is, that's a good challenge for the next calendar week. If you guys out there find yourself in a situation where somebody seems to be off putting or rude for no reason, instead of reacting negatively to it, ask them what's wrong. Yeah. Even if you don't know them, just ask. Yeah. Hey, or, or, I mean, it can't go any worse than call them a cunt, to be honest. You know, or, or, or hold the door open for them, yeah. right? Or, or, or here's, here's what I do. And I tell you who's really good at this. Tim Kennedy is the best. He at kills this. with kindness. He, yeah. He, very frequently. He walks in a room and he will be what you would never expect him to be. Mm. Like if you expect him to be an asshole, he is going to come in and be the nicest dude ever. Yeah. Like he, he will be it. And, and I think it's a, I agree. I think that should be the challenge of the week is if you're listening to this, go out this week. Look, this is a cool week to do it is it's right after election. It's, yeah. it's going to be really, people are really emotional right now. And I would challenge you to go around and, and, and stay positive and try to find something positive in every situation and try to be nice to someone, mm. not based off how they treat you, but based off that's what you want to do, and you don't want to let them um, control how your your right. your behavior is going to be. And then shoot us an email, and uh, let us know how that goes for you. That would be a yeah. really 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 cool deal. Yeah, any good stories you can. Uh, we'll have we'll have a website up here pretty soon. Yep. And uh, if if you can't if it's not up by then, just throw that uh, information on YouTube, and we'll check it out. Let's uh, let's go to ghost bed, man. Talking about talking about being talking about being something good. Yeah, um, I definitely slept well last night. Yeah. Uh, so ghost bed, they've been a loyal sponsor to Drinking Bros, and now the American Party Podcast. Um, I mean, they've been with you guys for like four years. Yeah, it's been right? a while. Yeah. Uh, a super comfortable mattress lasts forever. They have a twenty like. I, I yeah, for their business was, yeah. model, I hope they last forever. I, I hope they last forever. Year, yeah, twenty year guarantee on that. Bitch. Twenty year guarantee yeah. on every mattress. They're made in the United States of America. You can actually try them out for a hundred and one nights. Um, 
So for Dan, that would be getting laid twice yeah. in 101 yeah. nights. Um, yeah. If you're not satisfied, you can send them back. So if you don't like it, you can send it back. Uh, a ghost bed, each ghost bed has a cooling technology. So if you're like me and you're a fat dude um, and get hot at night, you uh, this definitely is, is, is a badass feature. Yeah, I've got the Lux too. You got the Lux? Big fan, yeah. You're a big fan. Mm -hmm. um, so the mm -hmm. other part that's really great about GhostBed is that they offer 30% off of everything for all the people who uh, support, you know, that make this country go. So military, first responders, government, teachers. Uh, you can find this on the footer at the Drinking Bros page. 30% uh, off any bundles at GhostBed. Uh, so GhostBed.com bundles. 25% uh, off everything else, and then 25% off a mattress, plus two free pillows, which is a $170 value. The uh, other awesome part about it is, is that you can finance uh, GhostBed uh, for 0% or zero dollars down, 0% financing. So for like a king mattress, that's like 35 bucks a month. Yeah, 36 month pay as you go. Yeah, no pay usury. as you go. Yeah, it's a good deal. Um, so go check it out at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Are they gonna? When can we get them to do a America? Yeah, we'll do one. Yeah, America we'll do one of those, yeah. with the screaming eagle at the end of it. Maybe Giorgio could Why put like a screaming eagle at the end of it. Oh, you mean like an ad? For I'm saying it? like when we say ghost bed, like when we do the ad and we go ghostbed.com forward slash America. Yeah, and then we can he just, could do like a screaming eagle. We'll just get the soundboard over yeah. here and load that up and. Yeah, could we do that, Giorgio? Cool. Yeah, he's saying yes, but he's. I can't see my. I don't have the you can't my see eyes on yeah. right here. Let me, let me raise my hat up. Let me see if I can see him. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how now. that works. Well, I got eyes back. Oh, here. I see. Yeah. Did you paint those on, or I how's did. that work? No, I actually was born with them. Maybe it's Maybelline. Uh, so, let's move on to Russia and China. I think these two uh, countries are pretty interesting. Trying They're pretty to close to each other. Trying to interfere with our election and stuff, and blah blah blah. I've been reading, so Evan Haver's been talking about this for a while, and I, I agree that uh, Russia and China have realized that they can't, well, he, this, is, this is not what he thinks. He thinks that Russia and China have been running an information operation campaign to, to emasculate American men. Like, they're trying to tear down at any institution that makes, that protects America, right? So toxic masculinity, as they would call it, is really what makes sure that no one invades this country and steals all your shit, yeah. right? Stuff like that. Uh, free speech, obviously. So Russia and China realized that they can't take us on straight up. Militarily, they can't do it. So they created a confluence of like anti-masculinity and division and distrust between Americans along every possible lines that they could think of. Gender, race, politics, religion, whatever they could. You could see these inf information operations, the ads and stuff that they run and all the fake news sites. And it's mostly about that. It's like, I mean, this X is coming to steal your Y or whatever the fucking algorithm tells them to fucking say that's going to butt hurt the most dumbass people. I think they do it I mean? all the way down to porn, right? Like, I think that they, I think they decide what a lot of porn is, right? And I think that all the way down to, I think, I think 100%, I mean, you look how effective it was in Vietnam. That's where we first started seeing this yeah. type of warfare. And Yeah, with, uh, uh, and, hint, what was her uh, uh, with, name? Um, Shit. Yeah. The woman that was on the radio station, I yep. can't remember her name. I mean, so it's effective, right? You yeah. talk about the, the ultimate guerrilla warfare, and, and I agree. Like, I, Russia and China could never touch us. I mean, Russia Hanoi, and China uh, Russia and China could never, like, no, not straight with those, up. Not with those econ economic, I mean, that's what happened. Uh, you, you can watch, there's three phases of the Cold War, right? So it started out in, uh, in containment, which is where we fought all these micro wars all over the world to prevent the spread of communism. Then we moved into a period called detente, which basically means like, all right, we're going to take it easy for a while. But our spy agencies were still going pretty hardcore. This wasn't a lot of military shit going on. Then we entered what uh, later became rollback under Reagan. And rollback means, you know what, we're going to fucking start an arms race because we know that they can't keep up. Like economically, we know Russia can't keep up with us, so we're going to make them spend all of their money. And then it's, it's almost like being at a poker table and laying huge bets against somebody that you have in a corner and they're down to the last set of chips. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're just bleeding them until they're fucking done. And that's what, um, that's what we did to Russia and it worked, right? So they know that. That just happened recently. And China's made all these inroads and blah, 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 but they still know that militarily 
They're, would, they're not even close. Well, I mean, I mean, we have, we have fucking 16 nuke subs out there with Trident nukes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you they better try to pull anything. It'd be over. You better, you better get whatever you send. You better throw everything but the kitchen sink at us on the first try because that's all yeah. you get. Yeah. You get one free swing. But they know that that's not possible because even if they did that, we would nuke every city. But I mean, in Russia and China. But let me ask right? you this: What's important to Ru- or to China? What's Money. important to China? And who we could shut them down yeah, yeah. without even ever firing around. Yeah, it would be interesting to see all these people that do like, uh, they do. We're not. I'm. Gonna, I'm not going to buy gas for a week to protest the gas industry. What if we went? Uh, what if the entire country went a full week without buying any Chinese products? That'd be pretty interesting, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it really would. So, back to this point. After creating all these divisions, this this is a a good. Uh, it's like Cointel Pro almost. It's it's like a really good uh, information operation strategy. So. You weaken certain institutions and create division. Then, after creating the divisions, you align with whomever the ruling class is, whoever comes out of that on top, mm-hmm. whoever's controlling the money, the information, whatever it is. In this case, it's the tech companies, yeah. right? The tech companies control so much of the information and even more of the money, I would suppose. Uh, that They're the ruling class, right? So... Russia, China doesn't need what they figured out is that they don't need to uh, they don't need to develop spies and shit anymore. Right. All they do is create these divisions. They tell people, well, you can't say this. You can't say this. You can't say this because it's offensive. And then we lose the ability to communicate with one another. And it creates natural walls between our fucking little tribal groups. And we fight each other They're, We're doing their work for them at this point. Let, let me ask you this. Do you think that there's any chance that when, whenever all those protests were going on, mm-hmm. You think there's any chance that Russia wasn't the one paying those protesters and Russia wasn't the one who was having those bricks and shit set out in the middle of the roads and stuff? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see evidence of that. I mean, nobody's been able to track it back anywhere else. (laughs) I mean, no one has. Yeah, so it's interesting. I mean, I don't think Russia and China need to directly meddle in our elections anymore. No. They, like, we're... The tech companies are doing it for them. Tech companies are decide, making decisions like um, banning that New York Times post about Hunter Biden, which was 100% factually accurate. And it's been corroborated not only by his business partner, but by a member of the intelligence community that uh, is, a, is a tech expert, right? He's one of the top tech experts in the country. He analyzed the email chains, the entire the computer, everything. He's like, yes, this is real. So, so, and that's it, right? That's the end of it. But it's not because Twitter... Facebook, they all decided to ban it. Well, let me ask you and, this. And re- not just ban that post itself, but ban references to it. One of our buddies, Matt Belinsky, that's here right now, had his fucking account shut down for posting innocuous stuff. It wasn't even nearly as bad as a lot of the stuff you see. When I say bad, I just mean, I don't mean that it's wrong. I just mean that it's a bigger deal, yeah. right? And it's fucked up that if you, I, I wonder what an algorithm is. Like how much of the public's attention do you have to have with regard to putting out information but before you become a de facto public utility? That's what I want to know. I've been asking this question for two or three years now, and I don't hear any good answers. People want to call it a public utility, but it's but, not treated but that let way. Me, but let me ask you this. Like, so if you took, if they took all the time that they're doing with all this automation, these tech companies. So first off, I don't know how anyone can argue that when you as a tech company are deciding. So I don't think that they have a, it's not a censorship problem. Mm-hmm. Like, like, you can't censor anything like that is number one. That is a, that is you going against our first amendment, right? Mm. So you can't censor anything. So what they need to do is, is we need to hold them accountable. Tech companies need to be held accountable to the accounts that they allow on there. Right. Right. So like, instead of just verifying public figures, Mm. they need to verify each individual that's on it. Like, is this a true individual? Well, now you're talking about section two thirty, and that's, that's a big debate going on right now. What should and shouldn't happen. What authority should uh, they have to self-govern and what consequences should there be if self-governance doesn't work the way it's supposed to or if they're negligent? In it? And it's, it's a really interesting debate. There's, there's good things about both. Like I like the idea that the government isn't directly involved in enforcing what information goes where. That's a good thing that the government's not involved in. However, yeah. if these companies that become de facto public utilities and become the main source, and when I say main source, I'm talking about 80 to 85% of information people get come out of these social media channels, then what is the responsibility of the government then to intervene without stepping on the First Amendment anyway? I mean, you can't have any censorship. You can't, right? You can't so just have let any it all censorship. go. Yeah, you got to let it all go. Like you can't. But if if you do let, if you say let it all go, mm-hmm. 
which is what Section 230 essentially does. It, yep. it, it allows them to not take legal responsibility for shit that happens on their site, right, that they weren't obviously aware of. So if that's the case, then what is the enforcement mechanism to tell them, hey, if you keep blocking dissident political opinions, then you're going to get fucking fined. I mean, whatever I the fuck, right, it, or how, shut down I mean, entirely. How is that not? I mean, you don't. They can't go to prison, right? I mean, you. I mean, if if you not keep, unless there's an actual crime. No, it's not I mean, a crime. You, it's not, it's a, not crime a crime to shut. It's not a crime to like to like. If I went over and I I wouldn't let someone, I wouldn't let someone talk out in public. Right. If you're not the gov- only the government can violate. I mean, your I first can't walk rights. out if somebody pulls their phone up to me. Right. In public and just starts filming me, hmm? I can't go over there and shut it off. Correct. Oh, that's not a crime, right? So Correct. whatever people get on a platform and start saying, they can do whatever the hell they want to do. Right. Right. Like it's not a crime. Like I, so, I, I don't understand what the, I don't understand what the debate is here. Right. Like they can't censor anything. Like if you have a platform, they shouldn't be able to censor anything unless it is a crime that's occurring. Well, obviously, unless right? if, if, I mean, but I mean, if it's a crime, then that goes over to the authorities, right? We already have of a course, judicial yeah. system for yeah, it. Yeah, but so, I mean, you have to like, they would pull down whatever it is. I mean, and then give that information to the police. But that has I'm to be ruled on that. by a judge, right? Like, I mean, I, mm. I, I think I think that that's in a like, but it's not a news article. Like, there's no news. Like, what's the crime of a news article? What's the crime of uh, that's freedom of speech? Well, for example, Bra- Brandenburg v. Ohio. If if the news article was like, if it said, I want you, whatever group of people, specific group of people, to go injure or kill this specific group of people or person or business or whatever. Yeah. That can be that can rise to the level of, of either. Well, that, I mean, that's, a, that's, that's, that's for, terroristic threatening. Correct. That's yeah, it could rise to a di- bunch of different levels, but it's also applied. I mean, the reason Brandenburg v. Ohio exists is because some clan asshole was making like yeah. we need to do this and we need to do that, and it turns out he didn't make any clan or any request to his audience specific enough to be prosecuted for a crime. So it has to be very specific. Like you yeah. have to. It has to be something that you can actually carry out. Like it's if, no if, different than me texting you. Like I can sit here and like text you all day long and email you all day long from random email accounts right. and you can't do shit about it. Right. And if, and unless if I threaten you, even as a public figure, if you went on a stage and had a press conference right now and you openly said, Hey, I want everybody in this country to take one of those giant cartoon mallets from, from uh, whatever the fuck cartoon you like, and then smash these guys like Tom and Jerry and smash somebody over the head with it. That's not a crime, technically speaking. I mean, technically, you are telling people to commit violence, but you're not giving them a command that is actually doable. So the rules are kind of weird about that stuff, and that's that's another. It, there's a lot of gray area in all of this, including Section 230, and that's where we arrive at this problem. There's something, some honest debate has to happen that does not include people from the tech industry because they're not allowed to. But I haven't on seen this. anything that we all have censored. to decide. We all we all collectively have to decide what we are and are not going to allow from these assholes. Well, it's the laws. I mean, it's like I don't I don't think there's I don't know that there we already have the laws that, that handle this. I don't know like what the argument is here, right? right? Like we don't we don't go out and put people in jail for protesting and saying the shit that they say. Right. Like I mean, we don't put people in jail for saying fuck the police right to their mm-hmm. face. We don't put you know what I mean like I don't know what I haven't seen one thing that's been brought down. That, the, that anybody has argued, like that we've seen people, you know, arguing about mm-hmm. in, in the news that should have been taken down. You know no, what I mean? I, mean like, I, I agree. I think it should have to be a, it has, should have to be a crime. Yeah. I mean, that, it, it has to, down. it has to, but we already, like, that's what I'm saying is we already have laws on this. People mm-hmm. deal with this all the time, right? Like if I walk up to you and say, Hey Dan, you're a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Um, like the cop you, and you call the cops on me, they're going to say, well, what did he say to you? Uh, well, he said I was a piece of shit. And then they're going to just say, okay, well, that's not a crime, right? We yeah. already have laws for yeah, yeah. this. So I don't understand. Well, we can't apply. We can't just like openly apply American law to an institution that is not necessarily governed internally by the law. That's what Section 230 does, right? So I guess in that way, it's good. The problem that we, we need to have some kind of conversation about where this goes. What we, the American people who utilize these devices, and these uh, social tools are going to allow them to do because they don't get to decide what they're going to do like that. Like, yeah, you're a private business. You can fucking tell me if I don't wear a shirt and shoes, I can't come inside your business. But when you're virtual and we become a de facto public utility, things change. And we need to have a conversation that does not include the executives from the tech community because they don't deserve a voice in this. They've already can't, they've, they've already been predatory. This is not, this is not a, 
this is not a com- complicated deal. I don't think it is either, but like, this it's a conversation a, that has to happen and some eggs are going to need to be broken. I mean, we've already done it. Omelet. We are, we, the, the forefathers did that. Like when, when they wrote the constitution, mm-hmm. like, I don't know like what it, like, like, I don't know, like, I don't know what, what the, what the problem is with this is if you verify. So if you, mm-hmm. like, I, I think there's gotta be a better vetting process of, of accounts. Right. Right. Like if you verify, like, here's the problem is, is let's go look at how many fake accounts there is of right. me. I mean, on Facebook back in the day, you did, you have to show your college ID to even yeah. get on. So, Facebook so, so, place. so why don't we do that anymore? Right. Like verify the accounts mm-hmm. to make sure that these accounts are going back to someone. Well, they so did whatever. do this with a lot of the advertising stuff. So now if you run political yeah. ads on Facebook, you have to verify who you so are. So I don't understand the problem oh. with like, this is not an issue. This is a, like, this is, this is a, like the answers are already there. It's well, just nobody wants yeah. to face it. Yeah. And there's, it's, it's a supply and demand issue. In my opinion, people have confirmation bias, right? They, they have these suspicions. So if, if some organization comes out and says something that's wacky or crazy, they're prone to believe it. Right. And these people know that. But so I mean, you can do the that, same that's, shit. At that's clubs. the problem. That's a, yeah, of course that, that's a problem. Not necessarily with the legal aspect of it, but it's a problem with how Americans have decided to, uh, they haven't done anything with it. The well, problem is, is tech companies have found a way to, to be able to skirt around American law. Correct. Yeah. That's the real problem. Yeah. Is, is that I mean, that's a big problem yeah. that they have found a way to, to, they have found some sick twisted way to skirt around law mm-hmm. when it's, it's really, no, you need to follow the law too. Yeah. You're not above it. There's no, there's give, give me one example that, that there, we don't have a law for already. There's not. Uh, probably not. No, we have too many laws. We have too many laws. Yeah. Uh, but so, yeah. So while we're on that, I, I, I want to I wanna get into this piece of it re- just real quick. Okay. So. Well, wait, before we transition, let me do this. Uh, so I've been listening to this guy, Jordan Harbinger, lately. And he has, if you like the kind of show we're doing here, where people just have open conversations and he has guests on all the time that are kind of, I guess, off the beaten path. So one of my, one of the f- books that I read recently that I really like, it wasn't recently, it was actually about a year ago, but it's called Son of Hamas. And the, uh, he had the author on recently, uh, Mossab Hassan Yusuf. And he is a very, very interesting guy. I mean, grew up in the Hamas organization and his time through all that stuff. Uh, super interesting. I, I enjoyed the conversation a lot. And then he also had on recently uh, Oliver Stone. And Oliver Stone went, you can, you can imagine, he's kind of a, a contrarian himself. If you're a fan of, of his movies and, and the other doc stuff that he's done. But he just, that, that conversation was also really good. He just sat there and talked about how fucked up the American media is. And, you know, I don't think he's a very conservative guy. So if, when you start seeing these people that apply academic rigor like that, who are not conservative, but are also calling out how defunct the media's credibility is at this point. Yeah. It's really interesting. So uh, it's Jordan, J-O-R-D-A-N, Harbinger, H-A-R-B-I-N-G-E-R.com forward slash subscribe. You can go see his stuff. Um, he, he's, I mean, he's one of those guys. It's like, a, I, I don't know what to call it, like kind of like a non-bro version of Rogan almost, because he has interesting guests on. They talk about deep subjects. They go for a while and discuss it, but he's not like, you know, talking about hunting and doing DMT all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's <laughs> a similar show and it's really good. Each conversation, each episode is a different conver- conversation with a different guest. You can go check him out. He's had hostage negotiation uh, experts from the FBI come on and discuss like use of force stuff. Mm-hmm. So he's not like locked into any kind of political belief or any of this bullshit. He's just like, you know what? This is an issue that's happening in our world, world right now. I want to hear from some experts that actually do this every day. Yeah. So I, in that way, I think it, it's very educational something that I like. And also, you know, if you're going to follow this rule of challenging the way you think, you need to go out and find these other shows where you're seeing people that are at the top of their field in certain industries discuss what happens on the ground day to day to give you context so you can make good decisions about things. That's why I really like this guy's show. It's why I like Rogan too. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy the show. Search uh, the Jordan Harbinger show on uh, Apple, Spotify, where we listen to podcasts and you'll find it. It's, uh, it's very good, and I, I, I really recommend this one. This is one that I've been listening to for a, a while now, and they finally decided to come over. Actually, we're going to have him on Drinking Bros soon, 
uh, probably this week. So by the time you hear this, you may have already seen who this guy is and, and heard some of his conversation. So Badass. yeah, he's a good dude. Let's move on. No. So, so my, my point is, 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 is I, I think to fix a lot of this, we have to go back to, and I, I was thinking about this this week. Um, you know, the biggest problem with America is, is that we, I think we have got to simplify the bills, the laws right. that are being in place. Right, like when it takes everybody talks shit to but, uh, what was his name, Ben, uh, the HUD secretary, yeah, ben, ben Carson, Carson yeah, about wanting to put a limit on how long a bill could be. And well, they're like, oh, he's stupid, he's he's dumb, he can't read forty pages. Like, no, dude, no. why do we make our laws so convoluted that they're that we can't figure out how to fucking apply well, think, them? So, so think about this. I think I don't think, and I, I think what we do is is we come in and we have someone say, or maybe have the American people. You know, let's figure out the average level of where people want to read and how, how we can keep people engaged. But I don't think you can create, I don't think our lawmakers should be able to create laws that are more complicated or mm -hmm. not understandable by the same people who have to follow them. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, how much sense does that make? But this is what happens when we put doctors and lawyers in place to represent the majority of Americans, right? Like, this is the issue, this is the core issue with America. This is the core, core issue to every, like if you go to the, these, these same laws that, that constrict and, and are supposed to protect the American people, right. they're also the same laws that the American people don't understand. Right. They're the same laws. Well, this, it's tax law, right? It's like it, the reason that fucking millionaires yeah. and billionaires don't pay as much of a tax rate that you and I do. Yeah is because they have a team of people who can read this fucking legalese bullshit yep. and figure out all the breaks. And it's all that's, for interpretation. It's not, it's not like, like if, you, if anybody out there that's whining on the left about Trump not paying enough taxes, whatever the fuck that means, had the capability to pay the rate that he's paying, they fucking would do it 100% 100 of the time. Well, like don't criticize somebody for something that you would do given that opportunity. Like, that is hip hypocritical bullshit. Like, 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 like why is laws, like, like we need to put laws in place and these laws need to be able to be interpreted for the American people and the American right. people to be able to get behind and support. Like if I have to follow something, if I have to live by this way, mm -hmm. well, I better be able to understand it. Right, like what, what, how much of that, you know, we, I always reference back to Iraq and Afghanistan. I mean, they were always having to listen to someone else tell them what something meant, right? Mm. Because they couldn't read. Like I always use this one village, for example, like the people couldn't read. So what was happening was, is that you had somebody who said they could read and really they were saying that they were using religion, the Quran, right. and they were telling them that they had to kill Americans and that's what it said in the Bible or in, in the Quran. So these people, that's all they knew. Like right. they trusted, they had to trust someone else with the information they had to live by. Isn't, Which is, isn't that kind of what we're on right now? It's very dangerous to, to live that way. It's, it's, it's dangerous. Very dangerous. There's a reason that in front of every member of Congress's fucking name, it says representative. It doesn't okay. say I control the way these people think. It doesn't say I am a, uh, a trustee of theirs so and me, I don't yeah. have to so listen to what this. they say. It's representative. What does that mean to represent something? Yeah. So I got a question. I want, I want to put this out. I want to like, if Giorgio could cut this for us, I want this to go out on our, our Instagram. Cause I think this would be okay. a badass segment. Uh, I, I want to ask the people, all the listeners out there, I want to know something in the comments down below. Uh, we'll put it on Instagram and, and we can put it on, um, Facebook, whatever. But I want to know, are, are the congressmen, um, are, are, do you feel like they are trustees or do you feel like they are representatives, representatives? Are they representatives of the majority of us or are they trustees to make the decisions for us? That is my question to you. I, I, wanna, I definitely want to hear, this is a topic that got brought up last week, and I definitely want to hear what people think on yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, the, I think? the idea is that uh, I put all of the things I believe in out in public and you vote for me, and then after that vote happens, I no longer have to consult with you about the things that I do. You trust that I'll apply the things you know about me in a way that you would have applied them in that situation. That's a very dangerous way to think, particularly when we've seen every single, every single member of Congress or the Senate or whatever, whatever best intentions they had obviously become flawed by this you know, completely broken system. It just happens. There's nothing you can really do about it in the current in, in the current political structure. So, why would you look at an institution that and that 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 corrupts at some point, right? At some point, it corrupts everything. 
Why, I, why would I look at an institution like that and put all of my trust in it? And that's what hey. you're doing. If you put your trust in one of these elected officials, you're putting your trust in a system that you know in your head right now doesn't work. Hey, let me say this. What do you think the percentage of Americans are college educated? Um, 25 about and over. 25 and over? Uh, 38%? Have a bachelor's degree. 34.98%. Mm. So let me ask you this. Like, we need things to be able to read at the level of the majority of American people are at. And I don't think that having doctors and lawyers who are writing the laws that people... Right. That makes no sense. I mean, this is... This is uh, 16th century England, right? Where most people are illiterate and, uh, you know, it, it's been a couple hundred years since the Magna Carta and King John being a dick about that afterwards. And there, but there was still this innate desire for, for individual liberty. You saw it with yep. the, the war in Scotland, the Braveheart thing, if you need a reference for that. But you saw it in all these wars that happened throughout, throughout Europe over that time. And that's, that harkens back to what I was talking about before. I think the, the desire for individual liberty is the strongest impulse in humanity collectively. Like obviously one-on-one, -on -one, my, my first instinct is to protect myself, then it's to protect myself and my family or Absolutely. protect my family than myself, depending on how it goes. And it, and it grows from there. But as a collective group, our first thing is individual liberty. You can see it. Every, there's, no group gets together and decides to subjugate themselves to anything and then, then expect that to turn out okay. It never happens, right? It's ridiculous to even think that that might happen. So, you know, I, I don't know what, uh, I don't know what we're, where we're going with all this. I don't know what people expect, but I know that you shouldn't put your trust in a system that you can clearly see is, I don't know, it, it's just irreparably damaged. And when you put your trust in these, these human beings, that is what happens. You know what I want to do? I want to find out our, our, our founding fathers. I want to know what level of education they were. Mm. I would say pretty highly educated for yeah, the most part. For the most part in that time. Yeah, I mean, uh, John Adams went to Harvard. He was an attorney there. I know that. Uh, I don't know about George Washington so much. He was more of a farmer, general, soldier kind of guy, but... Uh, Jefferson was a well-educated man. Obviously, Ben Franklin, he was never president, but he was a well-educated guy as well and an inventor. But I don't know what formal education he That's had. That's what I'm saying is I want to know, <clears throat> you know, we've got all these guys up there. Like, like if, you, if you looked at our country, if you looked at Congress as far as degrees, how many degrees they have up yeah. there, it's one thing. But what about the education of, that, we, that we have? What right. about I the mean, education of life that we have? Which right, is, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, so Congress's job is to make laws, right? So I don't understand the way our government currently works, if that is true. If their job is to write laws, then why are we hiring personalities and then giving, and we, we, that premise that we're just hiring somebody and then putting all of our trust in them to write laws. Now, your job is to understand and then write the law in a clear and concise way that matches the people you, again, represent yeah. with an R. Represent, because it's at the front of your fucking name represent. tag, bitch. Yeah, so I think it would be a lot more productive if uh, Congress were to um, be more of a polling service, right? They poll the American people. I'm not recommending outright democracy because we've all seen how that ends. Yep. It's just nonsense, and it doesn't go very no, far. But you, I think if, if you, you, if you want to see an outright democracy, go check out like an HOA. Because let me ask you this. How often do you think representatives, how often do you think that they already have an idea, which is a human, is a, like that's a human factor, right? Right. They already have their own individual idea. But how often do you think that they stop going to places that they don't want to hear? What, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, so here's what I do know. I know that if you're a smart campaign manager for a political campaign, you will find out the route that your candidate drives from home to the office and you will put yard signs of theirs all over that route. Because for two reasons. One, they like seeing their name because they're egomaniacs, every single one of them. Yep. And two, they think that this yard sign thing has some kind of effect or it's a predictor of something or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But in order to keep them on ta the actual important task, you do stuff like that. So, you know, that's it's kind of silly, isn't it? Silly. Silly. I'm very disappointed in what's happening in this country right now. So I got to be honest. So how do you think we... Um, well, the key, again, 
and it's and encompasses everything we talked about in this episode is personal responsibility and it's something that you have to demand both of yourself and others of yourself yeah. first and then of others and uh then both concurrently from there on out you yeah. know it, and it's it's uh whether you're an individual or a community trying to make something happen uh politically or or economically whatever is happening if you're trying to buy a house you got to save money, right? You, gotta yeah. need that, you need that down payment. You got to do all the paperwork and blah, blah, blah. If you're trying to, as a community, incorporate, hire a new police department, like if you're a rural area that started trying to become an, a real city, then you have to do all that stuff. <clears throat> if, and that expands, right? So if you're an established career person, you've been in your career for a while, you've got a nice house and you're doing stuff well, um, make sure that you're saving for the future and all this stuff, but then start looking at, okay, I'm pretty comfortable right now. How can I start spreading some of this comfort around. I'm not talking about redistributing your wealth. I'm talking about finding ways that you can make a real impact. Yeah. You're the, these, the small am- amount of money that you would be able to donate or give or redistribute to somebody pales in comparison to what you as a human being can do for this other human being. What do you mean? Like what in a you, one-on-one situation or a, as a group helping another group, right. whatever it is, you can make so, so much more impact than you can with just your money. Yeah, I mean, look, and, I, and what I would tell you is this week is like, you know, I want to hear what you all think the principles of the American party are, right? Like, what do you stand for? What do you feel like is the, is the basis that every decent human being can live up to? What is the standard? What will the standard be that we will all strive to be and that we can apply to every situation? I'm not talking about social issues and things like that. I'm talking about the core principles of, of a way of life, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like, like obviously, you know, putting others before yourself, like the, the core values, like what is that? And what do you feel like? What are the core values that you live by, right? Can you identify them? Because if you can't write, if you can't mm. write your ideas on a piece of paper, then they're just thoughts. Right. Yeah, it's not something that's governing your life. So that's why I would tell it's people not. to uh, try to, in every situation, regardless of who you are or what the situation is, whether you're uh, an individual or group, a politician, a business leader, whatever the case is, rich person, whatever the fuck. Err on the side of empowering yourself and others to make good decisions that benefit all of us, right? So err on the side of empowering others in a bunch of different ways. Give them an opportunity to speak, listen when they speak, judge what they say, not by your own political bias, but by the fucking reality of the situation, yep. and then expect them to do the same. Those are good things. and. Make sure that you don't dance on their grave when you're fucking right. And what, what, what is what? What are we fucking like? Shitty NFL players now that yeah. you, you ever every time Barry Sanders scored, he just dropped the ball on or handed the ball to the ref and fucking ran back to the sidelines. He didn't act like a lunatic. Yeah. Right? He expected to win, but that was for him scoring kinda, that touchdown. That is what he expected to happen. Yeah. You should expect yourself to do these right things. Yeah. You should expect yourself to be correct also. Yeah. And you can't be correct unless you challenge your beliefs and, and arrive there. So that should be the baseline expectation. Yeah, I mean, and, it's, it's like Barry Sanders, like he, he, I mean, when he scored a touchdown, he just did his job. Yeah, that was the least I could what, do today. Yeah, the least yeah. he could do. What he, yeah. he did what he got paid to do. He didn't have to, you know, he didn't have to perform and make some show out of it. Correct, yeah. And it, not that being flashy and all that stuff. I don't care about that. I like a good, I like a Lambo leap. I like a good celebration. It's fun, but it's just a metaphor, right? Yeah. Act, you, you should expect that out of yourself. Absolutely. The, the very basic fundamental part of your character, if it's not right now, should be a couple of things. It should be studious. You should hold fast and, or uh, study all things and hold fast to that which is true. That's what Paul said in the Bible, right? Yep. Uh, I'm not a religious person, but I obviously, obviously read it a couple of times. Uh, hold Study all things, hold fast to that, which is true, be studious. Number two, or 1A actually, I think these are the two most important things, is to um, promote joy, mitigate suffering in whatever Absolutely. way you can. Like if I, it's, it's, it sounds basic and reductive, but you can really, what, how would you promote joy and mitigate suffering if you were dealing with a dictator, right? There's a number of things you gotta do. One, you gotta kill that motherfucker and replace him somehow, like let the people replace him or empower them to do whatever. But then you also have to stick around long enough to make sure that can happen, if that's what you choose to do. But if you don't have that plan in yeah. place, then you've done nothing, right? But you can also empower people by just listening yeah, and not tearing them the fuck down 
when they get uh, something wrong or supporting them when everybody else is trying to tear them down. Yeah. That's a bold stance and, and to take these days is to stand up for somebody that's getting railed on by the internet. Maybe, maybe take approach of instead of trying to get them to, to believe how you believe, maybe take the stance of trying to understand why they believe the way they believe. Yeah. You know, M- maybe take that. Well, Dan. Yeah. Episode six. six.